When it comes to the benefit, is the greater concentration of capsaicinoids better? And, and then translating that into food, is hotter better? Um, you know, if you're looking at the end outcome, you know, the simple answer is probably yes. You know, okay. studies that have included relatively low concentrations versus high concentrations, they may see more favorable outcomes with the higher concentration. But frankly, it's really dependent on the individual. Some individuals may not tolerate the high concentration well. Therefore, mm -hmm. on paper, it may look as though the high concentration would be better or the hotter uh, pepper would be better. But if they're not going to be able to consume it on a regular basis, I think that wouldn't really work for them. So they may need to titrate it down to a lower overall dosage. The dosage used in the literature generally range from about 1 to 10 milligrams. Um, if we're talking about an encapsulated format, and some whole food studies have actually gone up uh, to 30, 40, 50. I think one study actually used 66 milligrams when you look at the quantity that would be delivered based on the whole food and the pepper extract. Some people can tolerate that. Most people can't tolerate that. Mm -hmm. um, so, but when you look at the overall, you know, Scoville rating, for example, and you look at the values that are much higher for the capsaicin, those higher concentrations typically are, typically are going to yield greater energy expenditure. Um, but I haven't seen a whole lot of data that have compared, for example, uh, a, a relatively small dose, like 2 milligrams versus 5 versus 10 versus 20. Most of those studies have used either one dosage or another and uh, have reported on the, the outcomes. Mm -hmm. Are there people that, that can't tolerate the supplement form as well because of the heat? I mean, is there... there you know, we, we've, heard, we've heard some reports. Yeah. If you look at the literature and they report, um, you know, potential adverse outcomes, there are some individuals with traditional encapsulated forms um, who don't tolerate the heat well. Mm -hmm. um, they really can't do this on a regular basis, and what they experience essentially is some sort of GI burn, mm -hmm. okay? Um, so there are some. Other individuals seem to tolerate it, you know, better. And, um, you know, across time, I think, you know, despite the outcome, people need to consider whether or not they're one that can actually tolerate this mm -hmm. on a regular basis. So, you know, people look at alternative methods, you know, of delivery, and that's been addressed in some, you know, more novel formats um, of encapsulation where the capsicum extract is embedded uh, within a central core and then coated so that the coating should theoretically allow for the product to be consumed, ingested, um, pass through the, the gut, through the GI tract, and then uh, dissolve more or less when it reaches the, the small intestine. Mm -hmm. So that's something that people may consider. Mm -hmm.